Hi guys, welcome to a new video. On this video I will show you how to prepare your muffin board for extreme overclocking. So this means for liquid nitrogen, dry ice or for some uh, phase change cooling unit. I will show you how to insulate your muffin board and uh, what kind of components and tools you need. In this example we'll be using an ASRock X299 OC formula with a 7740X KB Lake X CPU. I've uh, listed some uh, tools and materials here on the table which you, you should consider getting. Here we have a new uh, Inferno backplate from Kimping Cooling which was released a little over a year ago. This has a heating component inside the backplate and it greatly uh, helps to reduce the area prone to condensation. Then we have some uh, Armaflex closed cell foam insulation, some basic uh, blue paper shop towels and scissors to cut them, some uh, high quality uh, branded thermal paste. This one here is uh, Kimping Cooling KPX. It's a simple uh, Vaseline and uh, a paintbrush. The CPU container itself. This one here is a De Bauer's Beast container. It already has the K-type thermal couple attached to the pot to measure the temperature accurately from the base of the pot. This uh, particular K-type probe is uh, Kimping Cooling's own one, which has been for high accuracy and it also has amazing response time. I'm measuring the temperatures with a quite cheap uh, 10 mass thermometer, which is almost as good uh, as uh, an expensive fluke. I would highly recommend uh, you consider this one if you're looking for a meter. So the idea behind the uh, installation is to create a protective uh, barrier around the CPU socket to prevent any uh, possible hardware damage or stability issue caused by uh, condensation forming on the motherboard from running the CPU colder than the ambient air temperature using some exotic cooling method. There are many different ways you can uh, insulate your board. I uh, often use Vaseline and some uh, Armaflex insulation foam, but you could also use uh, artistic eraser, some uh, uh, plastic dip type paint spray or nail polish and the list is uh, huge and goes on. For this uh, example we will, be, we will be utilizing Kimping Cooling's new uh, Inferno backplate which has a heating element on the bottom side of the backplate. This greatly helps to reduce the area prone to condensation. If we uh, didn't use it, pretty much the uh, whole uh, top side of the board has a risk of getting uh, condensation water forming on it. But with you, by using the Inferno backplate, we can greatly reduce the area prone to condensation to just around the area between the RAM slots, the first PCI Express slot and the VRAM heatsink itself. Usually the areas where we get uh, issues if they do appear is uh, some uh, water bubbles forming on top of the VRAM MOSFETs. So if, for example, if we didn't use the back plate and we used a CPU like this, which can run at the maximum temperature of liquid nitrogen, generally the VRM heatsink tends to uh, freeze totally, as there is no load on the CPU on idle. And when we uh, fire up some heavy uh, multi-threaded benchmark like Cinebench or similar, the uh, heatsink starts to heat up and all the uh, ice on it melts and it drops all over the place, so that is a real risk where you could lose your CPU and your motherboard. But other than that, usually the issues where I, where at least I get are if there's some water forming in the RAM slots, which generally just causes in huge instability issues, but doesn't cause, a, cause any uh, permanent damage. If you are using just dry ice or some simple uh, phase change unit, you don't really have to go uh, so hard on the insulation even without the back plate so just cover the uh, closest area to the CPU here. I usually start the insulation process on the back side of the board as it's pretty easy uh, step to do and after that I can just focus uh, fully on the front side of the board. So how I start is I, I just take the normal Vaseline and a paintbrush and start applying uh, Vaseline on all the uh, possible risk areas I showed in the earlier step. Depending if you use the 
heating uh, back plate or not you should cover all the uh, area here you don't need a very th thick layer just enough so that if any uh, water forms it just sits on top of the vaseline and doesn't cause a short or any uh, stability issue from here I have already uh, cut some uh, thermal pads to go between the inferno backplate and the motherboard. If you didn't use uh, this uh, particular backplate and just a normal uh, backplate for your CPU pot, you would I would recommend you use a big sheet of Alflex, at least the size of the whole board, to go between the backplate and the board itself. So from here, you just uh, put the threaded rods through the CPU mounting holes, lift the board up and just turn it over and we can start insulating the front side of the board. Very very easy to do. Now someone on the previous post of mine noted that why I'm using uh, so much thermal paste on the CPU. For LM2 purposes I can tell you there's actually a reason behind it. So if we just use a very simple and thin layer on top of the CPU die. It generally tends to crack when we uh, push the CPU on cold, usually around uh, minus 150 or slightly below. And when it happens, it pretty much uh, ruins the whole session and we have to start all over again. So how we uh, run the issue is we use a lot of uh, thermal paste to create kind of uh, suction effect on, on the CPU. So uh, this fully doesn't uh, close the uh, risk of getting a thermal paste crack, but so far it seems to work fine. I haven't seen uh, any uh, crack in ages, especially after I started using uh, the uh, blue KPX paste from Kimping Cooling. So that is rough, roughly a good idea on how much paste you need to use. When it comes to putting the CPU into the socket, it's pretty straightforward. Nothing. Uh, differs from uh, how you would do it normally on for air or water cooling. As I said earlier, you should never use uh, Vaseline on the uh, CPU socket as you can easily uh, bend some of the pins and uh, it's not necessary when you have uh, an airtight seal on top of the CPU socket. You can see there is a small hole for uh, DMI uh, voltage wire in case you wanted to try use it and also you can use a, a K-type uh, thermal probe to attach to the bottom side of the CPU to know if you have got a thermal paste crack but I have never used it so I don't really have much experience with it so uh, there's nothing special about putting the c CPU into the socket just as you would normally do you just look uh, check you are putting it in the correct way and uh, also the IHS. You can see I'm using a, a lapped stock uh, Intel IHS. In this case, I just put it in on the uh, right uh, lever first and then the other one and that's about it. So in the next step we continue doing the same thing on the front side of the board. We just keep on applying Vaseline to all these uh, small little components here. What I do like about Vaseline is that it's easy to apply and it's actually, uh, believe it or not, pretty easy to uh, clean for the most part after we have finished our overclocking session. What I do recommend is that you are not too lazy about this process. There's nothing worse than having to face many sorts of issues just after 30 minutes of starting which could cut our overclocking session and force to start all over again. So pace. It's best to do this well from the start, so we don't have to face any uh, issues later on. Once we've uh, applied the Vaseline, you just take the piece of arm flex and cut a motherboard specific pattern just for this motherboard to uh, seal all these areas between the CPU socket, RAM and PCI Express slots and it also acts, acts as a nice uh, thermal insulation as well. For the sake of this video, I'll, I'll, I've already cut it. 
we just put it through the threaded, threaded rods and slide it down. Obviously on camera it's not so easy to do, but I'm sure you get the idea anyways. Use some uh, plastic uh, tool to help push the arm flex down between all these little components here so that it forms a nice airtight seal. It doesn't have to be overly tight or look perfect, it just has to be tight enough to prevent any uh, condensation forming around the CPU socket. Now that we have insulated the socket area with Vaseline and Armaflex, we can do the final steps of our insulation process. As you can see, I've stuffed the left side DRAM slots with a paper towel, as we are using a KP Lake X CPU, which can't utilize this side of the DRAM slots at all. I've also uh, pre-applied the thermal paste on the CPU IHS. Again, we are using a Kimpin Cooling KPX thermal paste, which is considered one of the best uh, sorts of pastes for this kind of overclocking among the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. From here, I would just uh, cover the uh, unused uh, Duran slots with some uh, electrical tape. You can also uh, use some artistic eraser between the IHS and the bracket mechanism to fully uh, seal the CPU socket, but it's not uh, absolutely needed. Then uh, from here we just add some uh, pieces of paper towel to catch any uh, water that may happen or from the CPU container itself. Then we add another another layer of Arflex uh, insulation foam to create a nice seal around the bottom of the CPU pot. Then it's time to mount, mount our CPU container. Again, we are using uh, the Bowers Beast container, which is quite a nice uh, piece of copper. As you can see, it's already insulated with a layer of foam. If you are any unsure about your mount, then uh, I would recommend you do a test mount to see if the paste spread is good. There's nothing more stupid than to waste uh, large amounts of liquid nitrogen or dry ice with a bad uh, CPU pot mount. We got our mounting hardware. Springs, caps, and thumb nuts. It doesn't have to be overly tight, just tight enough so that the pot doesn't move or twist while we are actually overclocking the CPU. I would also recommend you uh, don't have too thick insulation around the CPU pot, which could uh, put some uh, pressure on the DDR4 sticks, which could prevent reaching uh, good uh, memory clocks. I would uh, then put a piece of uh, paper towel around the CPU pot itself to catch any ice that could drop from these uh, threaded rods. Then uh, just add uh, paper everywhere to uh, catch any uh, water that could fall. I would also recommend you use a fan on one of these uh, threaded rods to uh, push all the uh, cold fumes away. And it's also not a bad idea to use a fan on this side of the board to pull, push some uh, ambient temperature air over the memory sticks to help keep them at a room temperature. If you happen to own a secondary power supply, I would recommend you run the Inferno backplate always from the secondary power supply so you can force it to stay on even when your whole rig is uh, not running if you are for example changing parts during the session. Other than that there's not really much it and the whole system is good to go.